On this episode of the Darius Faroo Show, I'm going to talk about Price's Law and the effect that it has on our careers. So the best way to explain Price's Law is to share a story with you. When I was going through graduate school, I worked at a call center. And if you have worked at a call center, you know that your job is to close sales. And you probably also noticed that some people were better at it than others. And that is what I noticed as well. But at the time, I didn't realize why that was. Um, But what I noticed was that only a few people uh, on my floor, there were like four or five people who closed more than half of all the sales. And it was easy for us to look at it and find this out because we had a big board, like a scoreboard, uh, where the managers and every, all the sales staff who kept score. Now, whether you agree with this or not, it was kind of motivating, but also demotivating. Uh, but the thing is that for me, it was very useful because I learned how value creation works. And what I learned was that value creation is not linear. It's asymmetrical. There are only a few people who contribute the most value uh, especially when it comes to like sales organizations. But what I've learned is that you can apply this principle throughout your whole career and it works in all fields. So Derek Price, a British physicist, found out this concept first in academics. And what he noticed was that of all his colleagues, the work that was produced, 50% of it was done by the square root of the total a number of people who were involved in that field. So let's take a look at an example of a field where 100 people work. Now the square root of 100 is 10. And what that means is that 10% of the people contribute 50% of the work. They create 50% of the value or they produce 50% of the total work in that field. So in academics, it's very easy to look at it uh, as in terms of number of papers that are being published. Or when you look at a sales department, you can easily look at the number of sales that are closed. Uh, And often the relationship is asymmetrical. So when I was working at the call center, I still remember that only five out of 25, there were 25 people on our floor, only four or five of them brought in 50 to 60% of the total amount of sales. So what does this all mean? Now, (laughs) we're not here to do some calculations and I have to be really honest with you, Price's Law and, for example, Pareto's Principle, things that are related uh, to this ID, which are mostly used for explaining why things happen in our life and in our career. Now, my implication is this, that value creation is asymmetrical. And if you think about it, why is that, right? Why is it that only a few people get or produce the most results, but also get the most rewards. Because producing results and providing value often goes hand in hand with getting rewards, right? Because most of us are in it to uh, get some rewards, right? Even though it's not often the right motivation. Uh, and we, we all know this, right? We don't do work just to earn money. We do it because we want to provide value solve problems, help other people. If we have that kind of motivation, we often do better work and automatically we get better rewards. Now, I don't want to get into that. I don't want to get into the the motivation, why you do what you do, but still, it's important. But instead, I really want to focus on the implications of Price's Law, which is that you want to put yourself in a position that you can provide the most value. Think about it. We've all been in jobs or maybe are currently in a job that we feel useless. And it doesn't feel great to say it, but we have to be honest. 
I've been that honest with myself in the past as well. You know, I've worked at a corporation. I've done work that I wasn't really proud of, that I, that I didn't really enjoy. And at some point, I looked at myself in the mirror and asked, am I useful here? Am I part of the minority that provides the majority of value or results? Now, we have to be very honest about this, right? There are certain things that we are not good at, right? So let's say you're not really good at sales. You're not good at communicating or you're not good at persuasion, all those things, right? And also, you hate it. You probably won't be able to provide much value. So if it's not your strength, go find something or some other place where you can provide value. And that is the main lesson here. That's the main lesson that I've learned from Price's Law. And the funny thing is, is I learned about this uh, law from watching a Jordan Peterson lecture. So I want to give credit to Jordan Peterson as well, is that these ideas are all about asymmetrical uh, relationships in life. Because <laughs> a lot of people want to pretend that things are linear and that if you have a, a, a department of 100 salespeople or X number of salespeople, uh, they all provide equal amounts of value. And that is not the case. And this is also true for all organizations. Not everybody provides the same amount of value. Some people are more valuable than others. This is not a great thing to say, but it's true doesn't mean that people are useless. That does not mean at all. It doesn't mean that people are useless. What it means is that everybody is useless when they are in the wrong place. So what does that mean? Put yourself in the right place. What's the right place? A place that you can provide value. And this is, I think, one of the keys to having a successful career and a successful life because we all want to feel appreciated. Right? We all want to feel important, but we can't be important or appreciated if we do not contribute. I think life is all about contribution, making yourself useful, but we have to be smart about it as well. And I've applied this advice in my life as well. Um, I realized, you know, we have a family business. It's a small company. I can provide much more value here compared to when I work at a corporation, right? I'm not great at office politics. Uh, I'm not great at communicating with certain people if I don't like them, right? Those are my weaknesses. What I do is I avoid those weaknesses and I focus on my strengths. So I, this, is, this is something, it's not new advice, you know? Peter Drucker, one of the most renowned management theorists and one of my favorite authors was saying this for decades, he said, I've never seen a successful individual who built a career on their weaknesses. It simply does not exist. This is not a, a fitness competition or CrossFit or martial arts or whatever where you improve your weaknesses. No, this is a career and no successful career is built on weakness. It is built on strengths. And if you do that, you get here, and this is where you want to be. Get, put yourself in this position, then you will provide most of the work, and you will also get the benefits and the rewards that come with this. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it useful, and also I hope you apply it to your life and career. And please let me know in the comments or send me an email what you think of this ID, and also when you apply it, because I've seen a lot of people applying it and moving and doing and putting themselves in places where they can provide value and it makes a really big difference. So let me know and until next episode, like always, take care. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to check out some of my other videos and also don't forget to sign up to my newsletter to get two free ebooks in your inbox.